What do you think about Prince Harry exposing the royal family? It's been a crazy week for Harry and his new book Spare, but it hasn't even formally been published yet. Although tabloid leaks and illicit copies of the book have accidentally made their way into Spanish bookstores. As a result, the memoir has already made global headlines with its new wave of allegations and revelations about the royal family. Following that up with three new interviews about the book and a new poll that shows Harry's popularity in the UK has reached a record low. So what happened? Let's take Take a look at the top 10 huge bombshells dropped in his new book. Number 10, Kate and Meghan never got along. In the book, Harry describes a confrontation between his sister-in-law and his wife after she said that Kate must have baby brain because of her hormones when she forgot something. This all happened during a discussion ahead of Harry and Meghan's 2018 wedding. Kate had just given birth to her third child, Prince Louis, one month before the wedding, and she made it apparent that she didn't appreciate Meghan's comments. Apparently, it caused such a huge row because Meghan was told that she wasn't close enough to her sister-in-law to discuss her hormones, and it wasn't the way people spoke to each other within the royal family. For her part, Meghan became offended by the reprimand and didn't seem to think that she said anything wrong. Harry also spoke to ITV's Tom Bradby over the weekend and recalled the moment when he first told William and Kate about his relationship. He said, there was a lot of stereotyping that was happening, and I was guilty of that as well, at the beginning, and around her being an American actress. Some of the ways that my brother and sister-in-law were acting felt to me as though unfortunately Unfortunately, that stereotyping was causing a bit of a barrier to them to introduce or welcome her into the family. Bradby then asked, the impression is that from the get-go, they didn't get on. Fair? To which Harry simply agreed. Number nine, William warned him about Meghan. In another part of the book, Harry reveals that his older brother cautioned him about moving too quickly with Meghan, which only precipitated further fractures in their relationship. He apparently told Harry that he needed to slow down in his relationship because after all, she was an American actress. Ignoring the advice, Harry and Meghan got engaged just after one year of dating. Apparently, this is when the tension between William, Kate, Harry, and Meghan only escalated. Kate allegedly took offense to Meghan's request to borrow her lip gloss before a joint public appearance. And for her part, Meghan was reduced to tears on the floor after Kate objected to the size of Princess Charlotte's bridesmaid's dress and requested that it was remade four days before the wedding. During his interview, Harry said, I had to put a lot of hope into the idea that, you know, it would be William and Kate and me and whoever. I thought the four of us would bring me and William closer together. We could go out and do work together, which I did a lot as a third wheel to them, which was fun at times, but also, I guess, slightly awkward. Harry said that he didn't think they were ever expecting him to get into a relationship with someone like Meghan because of her career. And clearly that conflict never fully went away. Number eight, he always hated Camilla. According to a leaked excerpt of the book, Harry recalled that he and his brother were initially resistant to the idea of their father marrying Camilla Parker. Bowls. Following their parents' divorce and the death of their mother Diana in 1997, Harry explained that his initial fears were that Camilla might be cruel to him, like all the wicked stepmothers in the stories. And even though his feelings changed after meeting privately with her, he and William still didn't like the idea of their father walking down the aisle with the other woman. Harry literally refers to Camilla as the other woman in his book, and he said that both he and William told Charles that they would forgive her and welcome her into the family if he promised never to marry her. Quote, you do not need to remarry, we begged him. A wedding would make the whole country, the whole world, compare our mother and Camilla, something that nobody wanted. Although we know that Charles would end up ignoring his son's pleas and the couple would eventually tie the knot in 2005, a full eight years after the death of Diana. In a shocking passage elsewhere in the book, Harry compares meeting her for the first time to getting an injection. He said, close your eyes and you won't even feel it. He also hated the fact that his stepmother made his childhood bedroom into a dressing room after he moved out of Clarence house. So obviously both brothers detested the fact that Camilla would even attempt to replace their mother. Number seven, he took 25 lives in Afghanistan. One part of Harry's memoir that has drawn global condemnation was his assertion that he killed 25 people while serving in the army in Afghanistan. Specifically, he claims that he's taken the lives of more than two dozen Taliban militants while serving as an Apache helicopter co-pilot from 2012 to 2013. He wrote that he felt neither satisfaction nor shame for his actions. And in the heat of battle, he thought of the enemy soldiers as pieces being removed from a chessboard. Quote, baddies being eliminated before they could kill goodies. So it's no surprise why this passage was extremely controversial. So much so that it not only drew outrage from the Taliban, but also from British veterans. Colonel Tim Collins, who led a British battalion during the Iraq war, told Forces News that Harry's statement was distasteful and said, that's not how you behave in the army. It's not how we think. Of course, Harry is a veteran himself, 
world, having done two tours of duty in Afghanistan during his 10 years in the army. He's previously talked about his combat experience, saying near the end of his tour in 2013, if there's people trying to do bad stuff to our guys, then we'll have to take them out of the game. He also said that most soldiers don't know exactly how many people they've killed because under battle conditions, you would often fire indiscriminately. But he also claimed that everything he did during his time in Afghanistan was recorded and timestamped, so he could always tell exactly how many enemy combatants he had killed. Number six, the best man live. In his memoir, Harry claims that he was not the real best man at the wedding of his brother and said that the pretense was carried out on behalf of two of William's closest friends in order for them to avoid a high level of scrutiny over their private lives. He described his apparent role as the best man as a barefaced lie and said that it was actually William's friends who gave the traditional speech at the reception because his brother didn't want him to give the speech. Most shockingly, he also claimed that William was wasted on rum hours before his wedding and that he was drunk when he went out to greet people before the ceremony. Harry said he could smell the aftermath of last night's rum on his brother's breath and that he offered mints to him and said, you smell of alcohol. Writing about his own wedding seven years later, Harry then claimed that William tried to forbid him from keeping his beard, despite the queen granting him permission to keep it. Apparently, William ordered him to shave his beard because he could not stand the thought of his younger brother having a perk that he was denied. Harry said, at one point, he actually ordered me, as the heir speaking to the spare, to shave. And he explained to his grandmother that his beard felt like a shield to his anxiety. And that was the reason for the different standard. Number five, fight with his brother. Harry recounted what he said was a physical attack by his brother, fueled by tension of his marriage to Meghan Markle in 2019. He claimed that William called his wife difficult, rude, and abrasive when he arrived at Nottingham Cottage. He was apparently very worked up and launched into a rant about Meghan, while Harry tried to defend her and told him that he was just repeating the press narrative and that he expected better from him. He wrote that by this point, he could see that William was not being rational at all, and the two men started shouting over one another. The confrontation escalated when they started exchanging insults, and William claimed that he was just trying to help, to which Harry said, are you serious? Help me? Sorry, is that what you call this? Helping me. It was then that his brother lunged at him. Harry wrote, it all happened so fast, so very fast. He grabbed me by the collar, ripping my necklace, and he knocked me to the floor. I landed on the dog's bowl, which cracked under my back and the pieces were cutting into me. I lay there for a moment, dazed, then I got to my feet and I told him to get out. William then urged him to hit back, but when Harry refused to do so, he said to have apologized and told him not to tell Megan about what happened. Harry said this resulted in a visible injury to his back. So it seems like there was a lot of pent up rage that came out during the fight. Number four, he didn't believe Diana was gone. In another excerpt from his memoir, Harry recounts the emotional moment that he drove through the same Paris tunnel where his mother died in 1997. And he purposefully asked the driver to drive at the same speed that she was going when her car crashed. He wrote, it had been a very bad idea. I'd had plenty of bad ideas in my 23 years, but this one was uniquely ill-conceived. I told myself that I wanted closure, but I didn't really. Deep down, I'd hoped to feel in that tunnel what I'd felt when JLP gave me the police files, disbelief doubt. Instead, that was a night all doubt fell away. I got the closure that I was pretending to seek. I got it in spades. And now I'd never be able to get rid of it. During his interview on 60 Minutes, Harry claimed that he and his brother believed for many years that their mother may have faked her death and would one day return to their lives. Quoting an extract from his memoir, Anderson Cooper said, you write in the book, you say, I'd often say to myself first thing in the morning, maybe this is the day. Maybe this is the day that she's going to reappear. To which Harry said, I just refused to to accept that she was gone. I had huge amounts of hope. He said that he once thought that maybe this is all part of a plan and his mother would eventually reappear. This was a belief that he held on to until he was an adult. Number three, William is his arch nemesis. In one part of the book, Harry describes the moment he returned to the UK for their grandfather Prince Philip's funeral. He wrote, when I looked at Willie, really looked at him, perhaps for the first time since we were little, taking in every detail, his familiar scowl, which had always been the norm in his dealings with me. He also mentioned his brother's boldness, saying that it was alarming and more advanced than mine. He also thought William's resemblance to their mother Diana had faded. So for whatever reason, he felt the need to include some personal attacks on William's appearance. If anything, this part of the book has been heavily criticized as unnecessary and really petty. During his Good Morning America interview, the host Michael Strand inquired about his choice of wording, seeing as he calls William both his beloved brother and his arch nemesis, to which Harry says, there has always been this competition between us, weirdly. 
I think that it plays into or was played by the heir slash spare, referring to William's role as the future king, while Harry moved down the line of succession as he and Kate had children. In his new Netflix documentary, he actually claims that this wedge that was created between the two brothers was all because William took the institution side, and that's what caused the deterioration of their relationship. Number two, racism in the family. In a 60 Minutes interview, Anderson Cooper asked Harry about claims that he made in his memoir that certain members of the family were uneasy towards Meghan when she was first introduced. He asked what was that mistrust based on and Harry said the fact that she was American, an actress, divorced, black, biracial, with a black mother. He said those were just four of the typical stereotypes that becomes a feeding frenzy for the British press. He went on to say that the family actually does read the tabloids, so whether they walk around saying they believe it or not, the headlines are still leaving an imprint in their mind. So if they have that judgement based on a stereotype right at the beginning, it's very very hard not to get over that. In his memoir, Harry also reflects on the controversial costume that he wore in 2005 and revealed that it was actually William and Kate who encouraged him to wear it. Apparently the couple howled with laughter when they saw him in the outfit ahead of the Halloween party. Of course, pictures from the party were leaked to the press who plastered it all over their front pages. The incident was so scandalous, it rocked the headlines of every tabloid for weeks. With its racist undertones, it was a risky enough outfit for anyone to wear, let alone a British royal. For a lot of people, finding out that William and Kate encouraged the controversial costume is a massive bombshell, considering all the accusations of racism against the family in recent years. And coming in at number one, living in William's shadow, Harry's novel really delves into his feelings about being regarded as the spare son, the fact that he was never considered on the same level of importance as William. When it came to their roles in the royal family, it's something that caused a lot of tension between them over the years. The book's title comes from from an old saying in royal and aristocratic circles that the first son is an heir to titles, power and fortune, and the second is therefore a spare if anything should happen to the firstborn. This is a conflict at the heart of the book. Because of the line of succession to the British throne, William has spent his whole life as an heir, while Harry has always been referred to as the spare, and this has clearly had a major effect on him over the years, which is part of the reason why he came to deeply resent his older brother. We can see this through the various chapters on his childhood, his schooling, his career as a royal and in the British army, as well as his relationship with his parents and brother. Early on in the book, Harry recounts the story of how his father, King Charles, supposedly said to his mother on the day of his birth, wonderful, now you've given me an heir and a spare, my work is done. Overall, there's no telling how this kind of thinking would have shaped Harry's life, as he was born into a very unique set of circumstances. Well, that's everything that we have on the list for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next video.